isolated situations, like meaning that you're in your own head that's isolated in their lives and label them as failures. Instead, they need to keep a bigger picture in mind. Welcome back to The Mind Composition. My name is Brian, uh, and for part three of this series, I'm sitting again with uh, Taylor Rose in Phoenix, and we are going to be touching on this topic of the comfort zones. Now, if you watched the last two podcasts, this is going to be the one that ties together the both of them. So it's a shorter podcast, but it's going to be really powerful. So Taylor, I know you have mm -hmm. a book out right now on entrepreneurship. Okay. Take it away. Let me just tell you, this one, woo! Okay, this is Failing Forward um, by John C. Maxwell, okay? So, chapter two is called Get a New Definition of Failure and Success, okay? So, this book, I read this whole book, and if anybody knows me from, like, a long time ago, everybody knows I spark noted everything. I never read a book in high school. I literally only read like one book. Same. <laughs> I think everybody did that, but yeah, I just, I hated reading. I was like, man, F this S-H-I-T. And so, anywho's, <laughs> long story short, um, and short story long, but, okay. So, here's a quote, okay? Oh yeah, second, hold on, second chapter is called Get a new definition of failure and success, okay? So, first quote I want to hit you with. You are the only person you can really label what you do a failure. That is very true. Getting out of that mindset of perspective, okay. You know, you think about just, you have, okay. Tying back, I just saw one over here. Um, one of the greatest problems people have with failure is that they are too quick to judge isolated situations isolated situations like meaning that you're in your own head that's isolated in their lives and label them as failures instead they need to keep a bigger picture in mind let that just sink in let it marinate <laughs> this is a uh, chef chef taylor coming out chef yes <laughs> big, big mama's kitchen <laughs> let the butterfly for, oh okay. hell no <laughs> little inside joke there's a butterfly i have a butterfly tattoo that's all jacked up because i got it in the living room but <laughs> ak i could i did label it as a failure but it's pretty funny it's pretty dope honestly big mama's kitchen it's a here. funny funny story but yes let this butterfly there's there's a butterfly tattoo just imagine it it just kind of flaps you know <laughs> accept yourself boo <laughs> <Plus> <laughs> so <laughs> anywho um we said another one um let's see it says this is a big one keep this in mind the average for entrepreneurs is 3.8 failures before they finally make it in business 3.8 of course that's statistics but it's gonna be a lot of failures let me tell you about a failure that i actually had failure but it actually helped me because okay so i was 2018 if anybody remembers this that has been, you know, been my friend or been, you know, just following me from the beginning. Bruh, I <laughs> literally, with my old roommate, we went to the thrift store. This is before, like, the real real and everything. It's crazy. I work at the real real now, which is, like, an online consignment store. Me and my, like, but this is probably, like, what, three four years ago? Three oh. years ago. Um, me and my roommate actually went to, um, what is it? We went to, like, my sister's closet or something. It was some, like, thrift store or whatever. We literally were, like... She came up with the idea because she was she was ahead of the game. But anyways, she was just like, yeah, like, let's do this because I told her I want to start a business. And she was like, oh, we started brainstorming. You know, we're roommates. Like, we'll, we'll do this. We went to the thrift store, bought a whole bunch of stuff, and just tried reselling it on Poshmark. Literally had a whole Facebook page. I designed a logo. Like, we were just, like, invested in this. And then... Thing is just kind of, mm, I wasn't invested in it. It wasn't my passion. I was like, mm, thrifted fashion for me. I like, I like more of a modern fashion and like, I have my own style, you know? So I was just like, it just kind of, like just poof, bad. So I was like, we're just going to forget about that <laughs> for real. <laughs> we're going to forget about it. But that's the thing is I was thinking about it. I was like, you know, with makeup, when I started makeup, I was like, I've actually had one failure, business failure before this. I didn't think about it. And I mean, yes, makeup, you know, it's, it's not the only thing that I'm going to do. Stay tuned. But <laughs> <laughs> anywho, so with that, it's just crazy because a lot of people, like, especially as an entrepreneur, 
is very hard. You know, you think, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put in the work, work, the work put, put in equals instant success, instant, you know, that's just how we're conditioned in this day and age. It's just, things are going to be so quick and with failures and, you know, getting out of your comfort zone. Yes. Like for me, I don't like being on camera. I hate being on camera, but you know what? I just said, somebody, I'm just going to be myself. I'm going to be real. Like people that know me in person, this is, this is what you get. So anywho, with that, I was just like, you know what? We're just going to throw that out the window. We're just going to go with it. But anywho, with that, um, you know, just overcoming those fears, getting out of your comfort zone. And for us, like for me, you know, I'm moving out to California, not knowing anybody except you and our other, our previous roommate. Um, and it was just crazy, you know, just jumping out there, just doing it. And what, I mean, I'm, I'm about to be tw turning 23 in three weeks or so. So, I mean, like at this age, going, living in three different states, just, you know, doing stuff and just getting out of my comfort zone. Honestly, it hasn't always been sunshine and rainbows and always been good. There's been a lot of uncomfortable moments and a lot of stepping out of my, my comfort zone and just doing it, you know. I started out as a, sh like when I first moved here to Arizona, I was so damn shy. I was just like, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know anything. I just... Little by little, just stepped out of my comfort zone. Something that I didn't like, I just step out of my comfort zone. And just telling yourself that it's okay, you got it. No matter what, you got it. And just having that faith in yourself. No matter, even if you do fail, guess what? Pick yourself it's, back up. It's a lesson learned. You gain knowledge from it. Failure isn't failing forward. Failing forward. You may think it, label it as a failure, but you're actually moving forward because you've gotten past that obstacle that you were too scared to actually take that step past. You cannot learn in life without mm -hmm. one, either mentors or failing or mistakes, mm -hmm. really. And then you fail and then you pick yourself back up. You're like, okay, hey, guess what? Don't do that again. Or hey, mm -hmm. learn from that. And then exactly, fail mm -hmm. forward. Take that learning experience from, your, from the previous thing that you fell flat on your face on and now attack the next thing, move up to the next level. Mm -hmm. And that's, that, that's, that's a beautiful thing. So in the last, you know, a couple episodes, we talked about healing. We talked about breakthrough. Many of those have a lot of failure points in them that we learn. Mm -hmm. And now you're in a comfort zone that, are the, that you're going to get out of that comfort zone and now push and apply that towards what you're trying to work on. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And this ties everything in together. I literally just flipped to a random page in here and... <laughs> The holy Lord has blessed this. I feel like because it's just like, you know, when you sit there and you're like, God, please reveal a sign. I don't know if you guys do this, but I'd be sitting there with the Bible and I'm just like, reveal to me. Just re When does it feel right? Okay, we're going to, oh gosh, there's a revelation. So <laughs> here's a revelation. The problems of people's past impact them in one of two ways. They experience either a breakdown or a breakthrough. Let that sink, marinate. That marinate. was just, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, Isn't that's that crazy? Cooking up a delicious meal in my head, thinking yeah. about that one right now. <laughs> he said home-cooked meal, not no McDonald's. We're, we're going for Olive no, Garden. No, we're, we're going for Olive Garden. Olive Garden. We're going for Gourmet Big Mama's Kitchen right now, being like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, stirring up in the crock pot the words of wisdom. The butter is flying. <laughs> the butter is flying. You will have your own restaurant one day. I'll make sure of it. Mm -hmm. But the thing True. is, is like you when like it's just a beautiful thing when you actually tie together everything that you've been through and you're like, I can attack this. You have the mm -hmm. confidence. You have the breakthrough to be like, I can do this. If I went through what I did before in the past, this is a cakewalk. This is a walk in the park with everything from before. So mm -hmm. you know what? Fail forward fall forward, get out of your comfort zone and push just yourself harder. Just do the damn thing. Honestly, just do the just damn thing. Just do it. Yeah, and no. <laughs> even, even if you don't, you know, get the result that you expected or you wanted, at least you have a new experience. You can say, yes, I've done that. You know what I've noticed um, in some things, some aspects of my life is I'll want to do something, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll be praying about it. I want to do it. I want to do it. And God is listening to you, but he's like, uh-uh, I have something better. So guess what? You go through mm -hmm. your trials. Your your plan sucks. His plan rocks. So mm -hmm. you think you want something. It doesn't happen your way. You go through a detour. But mm -hmm. guess what? You come out on the end with something better than what you imagined. Mm -hmm. Because it's God's plan, not yours. So exactly. everything ties together. It's crazy how like you just you look back on things that we went through or like that mm -hmm. you've grown up with. And you're like, wow. How, think about how many comfort zones that you put yourself out of to get you to where mm -hmm. you are now. 
so exactly. many different comfort zones. Like it's it's insane. And let me tell you too, this is one thing that really resonated with me from uh, it was T D Jakes, one of his sermons that I listened to, and he was talking about you know, he's talking about how he's been in different environments. You know, he's he started out well, like when he first like really started doing his preaching and stuff. He went to this place. I think it was in Brooklyn or the Bronx, somewhere in New York. And he said there's literally people throwing down needles, like syringes that they're shooting up with. People throwing like um, lokers, like things that people smoke out of for crack and stuff. And it's just crazy because he said these people were literally coming here and just, you know, from the power, power of God and like coming through his mouth, his words and stuff. He said he saw that he witnessed people just doing that. And that's the thing is he that's what he talks about. He's he says you have to. You have to be at the bottom. You have to, you know, go through those failures. You have to go through those experiences so then you can be relevant to a wider audience. Because for me, for example, you know, I've had a lot of different, like, experiences as a 22-year-old. For my age, I've gone through a lot of experiences. And that's what makes me so versatile. And, you know, that's what God has put in my path is, you know, all those obstacles, everything, it's made me have a brighter, a broader sense of everything and being able to, you know, be like, for example, like I was in freaking San Francisco and, you know, there's this dude, (laughs) I mean, he just literally like was just teaching me how to like, literally he just came up to me and I mean, the person I was with, he, you know, he already knew and stuff, but like, you could tell he was just he wasn't obviously like a CEO or anything, but you know, he came up to me, he's like, Hey, like, he basically told me like, yo, like you got to clean up your dribbling. And I was like, cause we're shooting hoops and stuff. And I was like, "Uh, okay, show me how to do it. Then I was like, bro, you know, like it was just the dopest experience, you know, just having that. And then also, you know, being with people in power and just, you know, just being yourself and just, you know, sometimes being yourself can even be, that comfort zone that you're not used to stepping out of. It was crazy. You're trying to fit into this mold. You're trying to sit there and be somebody that you're not. But sometimes for those people that are breaking out of shyness, just being yourself is showing people yourself is breaking out of your comfort zone because you want to be quiet. You want to be reserved. You want to be this and that. But sometimes just being yourself, once you break through that, I feel like that's... A comfort zone that you broke through was when we were in San Francisco at Charleston's workshop and you were mm-hmm. on spot called to model right there. Oh my Lord. He was like, he was like, Taylor, take off your jacket. You're front and center runway. Well, I was like, ah, I'm like recording this. I'm like, models, yes. All this time, you were like, <laughs> but yes, all these San Francisco models. I mean, and that's the thing. I feel like Charleston, he really, he, he pushes me, you. He pushed me. You he needed really that did. Little push. Charleston, shout out, kudos. Because he pushed me. He said, you know, he's like, models, because that's another thing is, you know, when I was growing up, I had haters and stuff. They were trying to tell me, oh, like, you're you're fat and everything. You're the fat. Bullshit. Literally, they're like, you're the fat, ugly friend. So I don't know why, but I let that that stuff just go through my mind. And then, too, obviously, like, just racism and just, like, them just being like, oh, like, you're nothing. Like, you're, you know, like, this and that. But, you know, just internalizing that. And I was just like, oh, I'm not a model. Like, I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm I'm nothing, you know. Like, that's kind of like, not exactly those words, but that's kind of like what I thought, you know, just those negative thoughts that I had about myself. And I was still working through my confidence back then because I didn't know who the hell I was. So, therefore, I didn't have my confidence yet. Mm-hmm. And um, it was crazy because he was like, yeah, he's like, come on. And I was just like, like I've never been that type that likes to really take the spotlight like that. Like I'm not a performer. Yeah. I'm not that. You know, I like just chilling in the background, just you know, <laughs> doing my work, letting that speak for itself. But you know, just like being up in front and center, just everybody watching me. I was like, oh my gosh. And I remember I was so damn, like I was so not confident in it. I remember like I was like, oh, I try to make a joke, like crack a joke and stuff, and it was kind of like a joke that was like aimed at myself you know trying to make other people laugh like i guess kind of like putting myself down in a way and then hoping other people laugh yeah and this girl literally she was like she's like oh no i felt it i was like oh my gosh she like she sees the truth behind that joke i was like damn i was like oh no she was just like it's okay and dude i'm telling you, i think i think her name was taylor too taylor camille i'm pretty sure that was her like you know she was just like no like you know you're doing good and i was like oh, thank you and you know just stepping out of comfort zone i was like 
it pushes yeah, you. Yeah, it was, it was like very intimidating at first. And I was just like, dude, like, I don't, I can't do this. And I just kind of like froze up and I was like, oh, oh crap. You yeah, know? it pushes you to do more. But guess what? You never would have known you would have done that or you're Literally. capable of doing that unless you didn't take that leap of faith and step exactly. out for once. Mm -hmm. So the, like I said, and everyone knows this, I'm not, I hate being on camera too. Mm -hmm. These doing these podcasts, like, yeah, great, cool. I feel like a little production manager. I got two cameras set up over here, <laughs> huh. you know, recording something that's <laughs> we meaningful. We're doing business today. <laughs> yeah, we're doing business today. But like, yeah, it's at first I was nervous wreck. At first I was like, I don't know what to say. I'm just like freezing up or whatever. Yeah, now I'm like, know. I get on camera, I'm like, I don't give a shit anymore, bro. Like, I don't care how I look. I don't care. Like, I mean, obviously enough to have respect to myself, but like, I don't care how other people like see me. Like, I'll just do whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and it'll be. It'll turn out the way it's going to turn out. It is what it is. But hey, you know what? I step out of my comfort zone because at least now I know I can do it and I can do it great mm -hmm. exactly. with, the, with God's glory. But yeah. Mm -hmm. And so real quick. Um, so just a takeaway. So this book basically goes through 11 steps of failing forward. And it goes into like each chapter. I forgot how this book is set up. But I think each chapter is basically going more in depth of those 11 steps. So I'm going to read them off to you. Um, steps to failing forward. Realize there is one major difference between average people and achieving people. Two, learn a new definition of failure. That is huge. Three, remove the you from the failure. You're not a failure. Four, take action and reduce your fear. Oh my gosh, that just taking that first step, even if it's a little baby step, a, what was it? A journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. That's so true. That, um, I forgot, it's like Sal or I don't know how to say his I last forget name. who says it, but I hear it all the time. Yeah, that one wise dude. <laughs> that one wise. That one wise dude, yes. His quote. <laughs> and so... Um, oh, Lordy. <laughs> And five, change your response to failure by accepting responsibility. And that's a big thing, honestly. It's just, okay, yes, maybe, okay, honestly, just going back to the drawing board. Okay, this is what I did last time. I'm going to go back at a, a, at a different approach. I'm going to take what I learned from this, go back at it. Persistence, persistence, persistence. Bound and determined. That's what, exactly. bound and determined. Because no matter what, as long as you have that in you and that fire in your heart that you're going to get it done no matter how many times it takes, you're going to, you're going to go places. Exactly. So, um, let's see. Six, don't let failure from outside get inside you. Yes, you can have, you can have these experiences of outside, you know, just things that happen and you're like, okay, I'm a, I'm a failure, but no. You you had a learning experience. That's what it was. That's what failure so, is. It's taking, a learning experience. Remove yourself. Like stop taking things so personal. That's one thing I had to take. I had to learn like fast because taking things personal. I used to do that all the time. You know, even with reactions, somebody says something to you. That's not a reflection of who you are. That's what they're projecting onto you. Mm -hmm. Anywho, a little nugget of knowledge. <laughs> so, um, seven. Say goodbye to yesterday. It's a whole new day. Today is a day that the Lord has made. Okay? Take refuge in that. Okay? So, <laughs> uh, eight, change yourself and your world changes. Holy sweet baby Jesus. This is so true. I experienced this for myself. Let me just, I can put all my bets on that. Change yourself and the world changes around you. Holy crap. Woo! Um, nine, get over yourself and start giving yourself. Let that marinate. Take the perspective you want of that. Because that, I feel like it's going to be too long to explain. But uh, number 10, find the benefit in every bad experience. You got to you gotta make lemonade. Um, you got to take the lemons and turn it into lemonade, for real. Yeah. Because life, you're going to have a miserable life. Because life is just, mm, but you got to make it good. So, 11, if at first you do succeed... Try something harder because what's worth it isn't always going to be easy in the beginning. Let me tell you that. 100%. No, that was that was great. And honestly, mm -hmm. we can almost even go into depth on almost every single one of them. And we probably should. So we're going to have 11 series coming up relatively soon to everybody that's watching. But <laughs> point is, get out of your comfort zone because the comfort zone is where the dreams go to die. 
take everything mm-hmm. you've learned before about your your healing, your breakthroughs, and apply them to everything going forward and fail uh-huh. forward. Taylor, feel it. That was an awesome. Mm-hmm. That was an, that was it's phenomenal. The book that you broke out, but um, it was spontaneous too. I was absolutely, like, yeah. You popped it out right before we started recording. And I, was I was like, like hold on, let me grab this. She's like, yeah. <laughs> Really? So with that being said, we're going to wrap this one down, um, but we're going to be doing more and hopefully let's break out those 11 series and, um, you know, maybe go in a little depth on more of those. But mm-hmm. the point of takeaway from this podcast is fail forward, take what you've learned from the past, apply it towards what you're doing in the future, and you're always going to make it 110% mm-hmm. if you stay faithful and dedicate yourself. Have faith, be bound and determined, be persistent because you will make it. Whoever this video is meant for, you will make it. You will. And that's on period. I'm just kidding. No, you will make it. 100%. I'm telling you right now. 100%. You will make it. So. Alrighty. Mm-hmm. We'll wrap this down. Awesome. Taylor, good job. Thank you guys again for wrapping and tuning into mm-hmm. this uh, episode of the Mind Composition. And I will see you guys on the next episode.